Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, June 28th, 2017, and it's time to go to work on music. Uh, it's been a great day so far. I have begun to eradicate the timing issues from yesterday and the previous day. Uh, it's not perfect yet, but it's a significant improvement. I would say today was like 99, 98% on point, which is, which is getting better. It's still not enough, but uh, I'm on the right track, so happy to report that. Uh, it's going to be a great session. I'm in a really good place. Let's uh, let's hit some online classes. Let's um, hit a quick guitar practice. Let's um, get in on the production front and uh, keep tracking these scratch vocals. Keep developing the metal melody of the song. I'll take you guys along for the ride and explain as much as I can as we go. Let's get into it. All right, guys, really good session overall today. Um, got it on the online class front and got back into the music technology class, just doing a little bit more with Python and the EarSketch library, um, which is cool. I'm just chipping away at it um, bit by bit, taking my time slowly with that. And then uh, got into the music business class, did a little bit more research on mixing and mastering engineers from some of my favorite records in the past. I was looking into who mixed and engineered uh, the original Tower of Power self-titled record, which I really love. And it turns out it was um, the same guy who did a bunch of Stevie Ray Vaughan records and some um, uh, Fly Like an Eagle Steve Miller records and also um, some other really big hits like San some Santana records. So you realize the people who touched these albums have a special quality about them. There's something about them. Oh, he did Huey Lewis and the News, big albums, which are massive, massive hit songs. Um, um, so I was just looking them up online and seeing where the contact info is, and it's just really interesting to see how the, this relatively small subset of people have shaped the landscape of popular music sonically for the last... I don't know, 40 years or something like that. So um, it's fun. It's really fun. I, I'm getting a lot more out of it than I thought I was going to at the beginning of the assignment. So that class has been uh, really powerful. But uh, moved on from there to my harmony class and was just getting a little deeper inside the blues key color, which was something I wasn't super familiar with because it's not a mode of the major scale. So it functions very differently from those other modes. Um, and that was something a little new to me. So what I was doing is I was um, breaking apart all the chords, figuring out which scale degrees are in which chords, which colors are implied, because it's a very unique co key color in that certain chords would imply a major sound or major key color, whereas other chords would imply a minor one. And that's, that's sort of the point that the author's making, is it's a very unique key color in that respect, because it combines those two aesthetics, which I just think is amazing and super cool and, and incredible. And I was having a lot of fun just furthering my knowledge and just expanding my sonic palette, which is uh, something I love. So from there, I um, did a little bit of guitar work and then uh, was reading a little bit out of my recording, Secrets for the Small Studio book, just summarizing this chapter about stereo mic arrays and spot miking. And then I got it on the production front and was just trying to smooth out the melody for the uh, the first verse of the song and get something that was singable because I think the original ideas I had 
were fine, but like they were in a different range than was really comfortable for me to sing in. So I just started adjusting those a little bit, and it's just incredible how much the melody shapes the overall emotional impact of the song. And while I want my melodies to be like really um, well done, that doesn't always mean making them like as complex or as attention grabbing as possible. So that's something I'm experimenting with, and the whole like less is more approach is definitely a philosophy that I, I vibe with, um, even though complexity is really attractive. I think it's it's all too easy, I think, to make things more complicated than they need to be, just because it's so easy to over-intellectualize music. But, um, but anyway, I'll keep you guys updated with what that was. I mean, there's uh, kind of some sonic restrictions in the house right now, so I, uh, I wasn't able to, like, belt it, but I think I'll get into that tomorrow and maybe do an extra take, or I might just leave it the way it is, which is sort of like half-volume singing. Uh, just to get the ideas down and I'm also considering maybe renting a studio space for vocals just to get like a really good sounding booth and a really sweet mic but I'm not displeased with the sound that I'm getting in here I mean it is a little reverby I've got the double glass thing which is <laughs> definitely unique <laughs> and not something you would typically find in like a vocal booth but um, it's it's kind of working you know I've kind of got I've kind of got it working so I'm gonna roll with that for a while and see how far I can get with that but I'll keep you guys updated um, overall really positive session I'm really happy to be moving forward and nothing feels better than having the time to really sink my teeth into the musical session and so that was probably one of the biggest wins today so I'm just gonna focus on that that's my big takeaway for the day is just to keep um, managing the rest of my time commitments as well as I possibly can to protect that music time so that I can continue to develop as, as quickly and, and deeply as possible so just appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys are out there grinding towards your goals, enjoying the process as much as possible, having fun with it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for more. Till then.